I couldn't pay your asking price for cash, but if he was willing to wait to get some or all of his money, we could work out creative terms then I could make sure your commission gets paid, maybe put some money in his pocket, and then take over his loan. Do you think he would yeah, entertain no, that? I, this is what I always do with On Market. I texted the agent and I said, hi, Laura, I'm an investor. I'm interested in your listing. On Sometimes I'll say, I wanna make an all cash offer. Can I call you to discuss? Or when can I call you? Or she replied back, sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and pull this up so you guys can see what I'm looking at. So just to give a little context here on the background, this just came out as an active and they did like a coming soon and then they, they went live a couple days ago and then they immediately did a 10K price reduction. Like within you know a week, they dropped the price 10 grand. So when I see something like that, it always sparks my interest. Hey, real quick, if you haven't tried PropWire yet, you're missing out. PropWire has changed the real estate game by giving you property data for free. It's the perfect addition to your real estate business because you get unlimited free searches and unlimited free property downloads. That means no more expensive lists, no more software subscriptions, no more paper lead services, just free data from a nationwide database of 157 million off market and MLS properties, all at your fingertips 24 hours a day. Now, if you're a wholesaler in Atlanta looking for vacant houses, we've got that. If you're a rehabber in Las Vegas looking for bake owned REOs, you're covered. If you're an agent in San Diego looking for listing leads, look no further. If you're involved in real estate in any way as a lender, landlord, or other professional, PropWire has the data to power your real estate business. So you should definitely check it out. Just go to joinpropwire.com to search and download an unlimited number of leads absolutely free. Now here's what's interesting. What I like to do is I like to jump over to PropWire and take a look at what's going on. And then I go to history and this is interesting here. Some LLC bought this property in 2019 and then sold it a month later for 143. So I bet you this was what I call a wholetail. They just bought it and resold it. They obviously did well, but this guy bought it for 143. Now think about it. He's at 165. He can't go any lower. If he pays 10% total in closing, 6% to commissions, another couple percent, maybe do a couple repairs or whatever, he's right at break even. So what does that tell us? This is a perfect sub two type of deal. So that's gonna be my angle with this agent. And by the way, this property's probably got an ARV of 250. So like if you go take a look at this neighborhood, this is on Kipling right here. I, I, I spent about five minutes before the call so here's a 240, you can see it's just these brick ranches, right? Same thing as mine. Here's a 290, another bricker, 245, another bricker. And again, here's what ours looks like, brick. If you look at it real quickly here, it's black paint. Why they did that, I'll never know. Uh, but you can see some holes up here with the hood, but pretty clean, like this would be an easy rental. And then look at the basement, finished basement. So pretty clean type of thing. This would be an easy rental, two car garage. So a really easy deal to do. These are easy for me to understand because they're brick, they're a thousand square feet, they're three bedroom, basement, garage. Like I can comp these things in my sleep. Plus it's my old stomping ground. So it takes me literally 30 seconds to get my head around, you know, what's going on. So anyway, anywhere at this price, if I could get this on creative, it would be a slam dunk. So let's call this agent and see what happens. This is Laura. Yeah, hi Laura, this is Jerry. How are you doing? Great, how are you? Good, nice to meet you. You too. I'm calling you about your listing. Yes. What questions can I answer? What can I do? Yeah. Well, what can you tell me? What's going on with this one? Well, I helped this gentleman buy the home about four years ago. Okay. And it needed a bit of work at that point in time. He did not do much and he is now going to live with family um, out of state. Mm. It is, it's not a great, I mean, I don't think there's anything structurally wrong with it you know everything looks solid it's got the hardwood floors it's got a full basement it's got a two-car garage it's dirty it's smelly there is some chipping paint in the uh, the ceiling of the living room and one of the bedrooms gotcha okay i observed most of that just from the pictures so that at it. Yeah, yeah that sounds yeah. about right so i'm a flipper sometimes we'll hold stuff and rent and this is a great neighborhood it's got yeah. the right bones you know brick basement, garage. Let me ask you though, I looked up and, and you're right, I see that he bought it in 2019, paid like 143.
He just did a price drop. If he gets an offer for 160, by the time he pays commissions and closing fees, he's gonna basically be walking away break even. Is that what you're seeing too? Yeah, I think that's you know an offer he would entertain. Yeah, I guess what I'm asking is, I couldn't pay your asking price for cash, but if he was willing to wait to get some or all of his money, we could work out creative terms then I could make sure your commission gets paid, maybe put some money in his pocket and then take over his loan. We're doing that quite a bit right now because probably got a great interest rate and it would make a whole lot yeah. more sense to just take over existing debt than create new debt, obviously. Right. Do you think he would yeah, entertain that? I can certainly toss it out there. I mean, it sounds like a great plan. I can certainly kind of float it out there and let you know. And he might want to sit and wait for a few and see if the price drop brings anything that might be a neater, tidier deal for him. I will certainly float it out there and I will give you a call back and let you know. Yeah. Have you done that before? I personally have not. No. Okay. Yeah. It's not that complicated. Actually, it's literally just taking over the loan. And then at closing, I would bring the cash that would pay closing fees, pay the commissions. And I'm unrepresented, so I'd let you represent me so you can do with that how you want. Take the full commission if you want or whatever. Are you able to do that? Um, I think I would probably make it, I'll work that out on the other side. I'll right. Work that out with him. Yeah, I just want you to know that that's, the buyer side is 100% available to you however you want to do it. Okay. Yeah, and then I could probably get like five grand in his pocket at closing. And then okay. what's great about that is I can pay a lot more, obviously, because I don't have to come up with as much cash. And then I right. would bring my own money into the deal to um, do the improvements. If we hold it, then that's great because I'm sitting with good long-term debt. If I flip it, then obviously when I resell it, it would pay off that loan and, and that would be the end of it. Does that make sense? Yeah, completely. Let me just run it by my broker. Let me run it mm -hmm. by him. Make sure everything adds up. It sounds like a great option to net yeah. him a little more overall. And then I'll get back with you. Yep. And he doesn't have to do any repairs. He won't have, there won't be yeah. appraisals, inspections, none of that. So it is a really great solution for the right situation. And also sure. I'd be willing, if it's helpful, do a conference call with your seller, if that's helpful okay. to talk it through with him. Oh, great. Fantastic. You know, sometimes in this in this changing market with interest rates and all this stuff, I'm learning a lot. So yeah, you have to kind of think outside the box yeah. right now because yeah, uh, you know sure. if I if I came in to buy this cash, it would never work because he would have to write a check at closing or, or you know lose money from when he bought it. And right. That's never a good solution. <laughs> no one likes doing that. Yeah, for sure. Keep in mind too, any listings you get that are distressed, you know, let me know. I'll let you write for me, get both sides. I can do cash, okay. creative like this, or, or whatever makes sense. I love okay? it. Okay, awesome. It. Thank you, Laura. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, no, that went about as well as can be expected. It's not a very complicated conversation, right? I mean, it's fairly straightforward, especially if you know what's going on. She revealed that he bought it a couple years ago, but if you can look up what they bought it for, and then you can do some basic math, you know it's gonna be a great sub two type of deal. All right guys, questions, feedback, what'd you think? What is your ultimate goal if you get this house? Say you get the creative financing to work out. Well, what are you, are you trying to just fix it up and sell it real quick? Is that, is that what we're looking for? Uh, not typically, no, I wholesale them. Oh, you do? Oh yeah, heck yeah, you wholesale that. If I got that deal at 165 and he has a 3% interest rate, I am gonna to have to come up with some cash because I'm gonna to have to pay that agent, I'm gonna to have to pay some closing fees, I'm gonna to have to pay the seller some cash. So that's what might hurt my deal. With on market, sometimes what hurts it is I just gotta pay out a bunch because the seller can't pay the agent, the seller can't pay the closing fees because they don't have enough room, right? I always try to get the seller at least five grand in his pocket because if, you don't, if they're not getting anything, it's really hard to get them motivated to, to even look at your offer. It's kind of like, hey, you can try to sell this for 165, but by the time you pay the commissions and closing fees and probably a list of repairs, because that thing needs work, right? You're gonna walk away with nothing. Or let me just take over your loan and I'll give you five grand. So, you know, nothing or five grand, what sounds better? <laughs> That's kind of how I get them to think about it. With the numbers, how would it actually work for you? I mean, it's only been a week, but it's still not moving at that price, so. Well, that's, that's the thing about creative. Creative, it doesn't matter about the price anymore. No one cares about the price. They care about the terms. When I go to an investor in that area that wants a rental, and I say, hey, I got this deal for you. All you gotta do is come up with 30 grand, 35 grand, and it's yours. 
and they don't have to come up with new terms, new financing, new down payment, 9% interest rate today or whatever, and then get into a 3%, they'll, they'll pay whatever price I tell them. They'll be happy to get into that deal. That's why creative is so attractive. Buyers will overpay because of the terms. And they're still getting a deal because ARV is 250. So even if they pay, whatever they pay for buy and hold, now for a flipper, it may not make sense, but for buy and hold, it makes a lot of sense. So Robin said, I like how you put out there she could do more deals with you in the future. I always forget that part. Always remember that part. Karen said you went straight to the point. Yeah, the nice thing about agents is I don't mess around. I, I, I like to start out and say, tell me what's going on. And then they'll just start jabbering and tell me. Sometimes they won't tell me much. Sometimes they'll tell me a lot. She was really helpful. She told me, you know, hey, it needs a bunch of work. It smells bad, blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, great. And then I just kind of go right into it. Charla said, when I mentioned the sub two scenario to my agent, her response was the loan is not assumable. What's your response? Yeah, so that's a very common response. If the agent's unclear about what you're saying, I'll say, now listen, um, I'm not assuming the loan. I'm just taking over the loan. There's a big difference. Assuming would mean that I have to qualify and move the loan from them to me. And that's not what we're doing. We're actually just leaving the loan in their name, but I'm taking it over. So you just have to clarify that if they're uncertain about how that works. And did you guys notice how I offered to get on a call with the seller? I wish I could every time because oftentimes agents are the ones that screw it up because they don't know how to explain it back to the seller very well. I always offer, hey, you know, let's put them on a conference call and I'll explain it to them. <laughs> so I called a title company and I asked them to do a subject two and they said, you mean assumables? No, they just don't understand what subject two means. No, never use the word assu assumption, assumable. You can assume loans. There is such a thing as assuming a loan, but that's not what we're doing. 